Okay, what's up guys? This is Mark. Had some technical difficulties, but I'm live, so all that kind of fun stuff. So I wanted to actually talk a little bit about the Sacramento real estate market update, but I want to do it almost on a weekly basis because I feel like the market right now is absolutely crazy and there's a lot of moving parts, a lot of things change, a lot of things, all this kind of stuff. So I want to do a live pretty much once a week to give people a little bit of updates on what I feel is important to them, what I feel is kind of relevant as far as the, the market right now. So, you know, a lot of the people we're moving in right now are very nervous. I mean, nervous, being nervous right now is just, it's just kind of part of the game. I mean, at this point with interest rates going up, um, the market isn't as much of a kind of a sure thing. I think there's some people still waiting for interest rates to get down to the twos. Um, one of the things that I did start watching on the news was that some employers, well, okay, some employers told people they could work at home, but now that kind of they're bringing them back, they're bringing them back, which kind of means a lot of interesting stuff to me. Um, you know, a lot of people have asked me, well, where do we think this additional inventory is going to come from? What do we, what are we thinking in the future for real estate in Sacramento or nationwide? Well, I think also the idea is that, um, even though we're shifting our focus a lot towards interest rates, which I think is fantastic, I also do think that it's going to be very important when all of a sudden, you know, vaccines go out, COVID's done. What are these employers planning on doing? I mean, for me, it kind of makes sense, save a little money, have people work at home, call it a day. But then, you know, my wife and I were talking a little bit and she mentioned that the fact that a lot of these people have these big commercial leases, commercial buildings. And the fact is that even though they had told people right now to actually work at home, how long do we think this is going to go on? I know right now that's one of the things a lot of my clients have been asking. Well, they've been telling me, you know what, I have to go into work a couple days a week, but it's okay. So what if that all of a sudden switches? What if all of a sudden we start seeing the fact that people have to go back to work. What does that do to our market here in Sacramento, California? Well, I do think that a lot of the people who are looking to buy right now in Sacramento are people for the most part who are coming from out of town. Uh, you got people coming in from Portland, Hawaii. We work for people all over the place, even out of the United States moving in. And so I've been noticing a lot, a lot of people moving in from the Bay Area up here. Now, one of the reasons why, it's not just because, you know, hey, you know, Sacramento is this amazing place for me to move to. It's because strategically the location is close enough to be to the Bay Area where you have a couple hours drive if you need to go in a couple days a week. So what, the, what happens when all of a sudden everyone goes back to work and we're told that, you know what, we did a stay at home thing for just for a little while, but now everyone's kind of back to work. What does that do to our real estate market? Um, I do think that kind of takes a little bit of the pressure off as far as all these people moving into Sacramento. I think that the housing market needs a little room to breathe right now. I think more than ever, the housing market here in Sacramento needs time to catch its breath. And because we're running on such low inventory right now, we don't really have a chance to do that. And it's really, really absolutely hurting the market because um, there's no room to breathe. I mean, the new homes being gobbled up, sellers are still listing their, their homes, you know, out of control appraisal contingency. Have you heard of that? Yeah, I, I don't really know what that is. So there's a lot of stuff still going on, but I do think we're going to be looking currently right now for some kind of things to stop and kind of kind of alleviate the pressure a little bit. And I do think once we get the vaccines, all of a sudden people are going back to work. There needs to be a little focus and attention put on is this going to mean we go back to work? What does this mean to me? Because I know right now I've seen in the paper, there's been a couple of lawsuits, you know, people basically saying, hey, look, my job told me I could work from wherever, but now they're telling me to come back. So what does that mean to me? I mean, in the Bay Area, it's going to mean honestly about a two hour commute, traffic, maybe three. I mean, that's out of control. So I think that's going to be one of the factors that plays in probably in the next few months, some part of this year for, for COVID. Okay. Now I want to switch gears a little bit. If you guys also have questions, please let me know. I kind of want to get online and tell you guys exactly what we're seeing. We have a lot of stuff going right now. We got about 20 new homes in contract. We've got a land deal going right now as well. Um, we've got a couple of listings coming on the market as well. A couple in Marin County of all places. Um, that's my uh, home away from home. Um, okay. So let's think about this as far as mortgage rates go. Now, the truth of the matter is I talked to my buddy, Matt, the mortgage guy. Love Matt. Also, please check out his channel. He's amazing. But we had a talk also. And um, something that surprised me but did make sense is that, you know, back in the day when interest rates were lowering, there was a whole thing about, you know, hey, if it gets down to a 2.6, please lock me in. 
But now after talking to my buddy, Matt, what he was saying makes a lot of sense. The fact that like, you know, lock it in. I mean, could it get better? Sure, but it could get worse. So lock it in. So locking your rate, I'm telling you guys, you really need to have a active, super, a mortgage guy who knows what they're talking about because the lock in the rate is is going to be super vital going forward. Okay. So I want to talk also about the new communities because there are some new communities coming up and I want to talk about those right now as well. As we all know, new communities are that hot thing right now in Sacramento. You got Rockland, you got Roseville, you got El Dorado Hills, wherever you go, there are actually new communities popping up. The hot community right now, and you heard it right here first, is Beezer. Beezer hasn't even started, even, even really announced it too much. It's basically a community they're starting in Lincoln, California. Now, I always tell people, if you're going to be buying a new home, the best time to buy it is when they start building or before they start building, before those models pop in the door. That's when you're basically going to get the biggest bang for your buck. You're more likely to get a home. So Beezer is building at Lincoln. If someone wants to ask about that, please, you know, contact information below and I'll give you to my person who's over there. He's building, he's one of the sales rep. He's really awesome, Dan. And I'll give you his number so you can connect with him directly and get yourself on a waiting list before they even start building. And like I said, if anyone's ever worked with new homes, you'll know that if you lock in a new home, your house is gonna appreciate the most in that area. So new home community, I'd say Beezer. Lennar is building in Folsom Ranch. They're opening up a few communities as well. Lennar is one of the hot builders in this area. I mean, you know, they're not... I'm not a big fan of Lennar myself, but at the same time, they are very popular in this area. So they're building in Folsom Ranch. Now, one of the communities, if you're looking for upscale, and one of the communities that we're going to be doing videos on actually is Toll Brothers in Folsom. There's a plus 55 community that the Toll Brothers are doing up in Folsom that has not been videoed. So I'm going to be doing some model stuff and going out there and doing some models and kind of feeling out those, uh, those models and see how amazing it is. Like I told people many times, Toll Brothers tends to be one of the, uh, they're a luxury builder. Anyone who knows Toll Brothers knows that basically they are a luxury builder. So what I tell people straight up is check out Toll Brothers, but you know, understand that when you go to Toll Brothers, you're going to be paying over a million dollars and their upgrades are second to none. But at the same time, Price-wise, they're about maybe three times as much as you'd pay for upgrades in other houses. So just understand this. Also, Toll Brothers, Rockland, Skyline, Oakcrest, fantastic. Big shout out to a friend of mine there, Rowena. She's one of the sales managers up there and she is amazing. So I love Toll Brothers as well. It's kind of interesting to see that they built, started building in Rockland. They didn't build in El Dorado Hills. They didn't build until the third community in Folsom, but they chose Rockland. So I think Rockland is going to be one of my picks that's going to explode in 2022. I mean, it already has. So I'm sure a lot of people are going to say, you know what, it, are, it already kind of has. But Rockland is a fantastic place as far as schools, as far as senior money increase. Um, but there's some kind of, there, there's all these other new communities, you know, Black Pines. Okay. Okay. This is this is the part of the, uh, the, the, the live where you're going to really love this. Black Pines and my buddy Keen in Black Pines and Rockland, you'll love this. You can actually get a four bedroom house, Black Pines in Rockland, California, under $500,000 in Rockland. I'm not talking Citrus Heights. We're not talking anything else. We're talking Rockland. Black Pines is building. It's amazing. I didn't even think it was even possible until I went over there with a client of ours, Andy, and under $500,000 in Rockland. And so my buddy Andy was like, well, what do you think, Rockland or Anatolia? And I was saying, you know, Rockland, the way Whitney Ranch is developing out there, Rockland is such a good bet for growing, growing, growing. Rockland's fantastic. Anatolia is his own thing. I mean, it's it's just going crazy. Woodside is going to be building a couple, I think, a couple other communities. At least that's what we hear. Um, and Anatolia is going crazy as well. Then what else? There's Blue Mountain, who is kind of a dark sleeper pick. They have nice homes. The only thing about Blue Mountain is, and this is kind of a weird one, is the fact that if you do see the Blue Mountain homes, you're going to be scratching your head. You're going to be like, okay, these are single family homes. They kind of have a townhouse feel to them. Now, the trick about Blue Mountain is this. When you go see the models, understand that there is separation between the homes. There, It's just basically like plastered in so that um, the appearance looks a little bit better. So Blue Mountain is another sleeper pick. If you guys are thinking about getting a nice home in the Sacramento Metro, Natomas, you're thinking close to airports, downtown. I, you know, I love the Blue Mountain homes. I love Beezer. I love the North Natomas area for investments. I don't think you can get a better bang for your buck for investments 
Natoma is still one of the things that Natoma does lack is schools. Schools really does hurt Natoma. So I hopefully they'll develop schools and kind of create a little bit more, you know, infrastructure around Natoma because I do think it's it's kind of um, Elk Grove ish, and Elk Grove is easily the hottest market in the um in the sacramento metro by far elk grove is fantastic it's growing like crazy people love elk grove one is the schools but two is the location towards the bay area if you look at sacramento elk grove tends to be the place or is the place that's the closest to the bay area you can get anywhere within about two hours and that's absolutely great um okay another thing i want to talk about sellers too um and here's something i was talking about matt with matt on his podcast is the fact that i truly believe right now that what we're going to see in the end of 2022 is we're going to see a little bit of a relaxing. I think interest rates are going to go up. I do think people are going to start going back to work where they live and maybe it's not going to be as hot of a of an issue to move out of the city you work in. And so I do think that if you are selling your house and you're thinking to yourself, hey, you know, I'm just going to wait a little while, wait a little while. I don't think, okay, here's the thing. I don't think it gets better than maybe a month ago. And I think it's getting worse for people looking to sell their houses. So I do think that if you're thinking about selling your house, this is kind of the time to do it. I, I think that in what we're going to learn in the future is that because interest rates are going to be rising, my prediction, are going to be rising, it's going to push first-time home buyers completely almost out of the market. Um, you know, they're, they're, it's just harder and harder to buy a house. So you're going to have lower demand. And even though the supply and the supply might actually be coming back because, you know, truthfully, if we do have these vaccines, a lot of the reasons why um, there weren't a lot of inventory to start with is because people didn't want to sell during a COVID market. So COVID goes away, we get the vaccines, things somewhat get back to normal. I mean, truthfully, we probably never will go back to normal. But to an extent, if they go back to normal, um, I do think that there are a couple things that are happening in the real estate market that we probably could get a little bit of breathing room. So if you are a seller and you're thinking to yourself, I really would love to like sell my house. I just don't know the time. I think probably the time was maybe a month ago. And I think the longer you go, even though summer tends to be a hot time, I still think the interest rates are absolutely nuts. And I, I, I just can't, I just can't, I don't know. Here's the thing. I just can't see um, this strong of a seller's market for that much. I think it's a seller's market on steroids right now. And I think if you are thinking about selling, you should think about it in this market. And again, it all depends on where you want to move because you could sell your house and then all of a sudden jump into the market. Okay, Justin Edwards, what advice do you have for someone who is approved for 300K but wants a three and two bedroom in Sacramento? That's a tough one. Okay, Justin, first of all, are you FHA? Are you VA? Or are you conventional? That's a big one. I think 300 can still do it, but it's hard. You might have to be conventional and you might have to settle for a fixer. I would say the areas you're going to be looking at would probably be North Highlands. I would say maybe Citrus Heights. I would say maybe Antelope a little bit. FHA. Okay. So it's going to be a little tougher. FHA, as anyone knows, is a little bit harder. They're a lot stricter as far as getting a person in a home. Conventional is great because you can get a fixer, you buy it, you fix it up a little bit, and there you go. FHA is going to be a little tough. But I would say if you do have a shot for an FHA in this market, we're talking North Highlands, some parts of Sacramento near downtown, I think you could probably do it. I mean, these aren't going to be the, these are going to be the entry level areas in Sacramento, but I do think the price point is super hot. If you can get something under 300, I do think that it's going to only go, it's only going to skyrocket up. So I do think you can probably do it North Island, some parts of Sacramento, I'd say Citrus, maybe Rancho, some areas, um, you know, but straight up your schools are probably not going to be great and crime could be a little bit of an issue, but that's kind of what you're looking at. But here's the thing. Okay. Here's something that I tell people too. If, if you are looking for something 300 range, I would also look in like, you know, places like Marysville. Um, I would say places a little outside of Sacramento. I think 300 thousand goes a long ways there. We actually moved a couple who's looking in Sacramento and we moved them out that way as well, um, a little fur further out. 
and it wasn't their first choice, but they got something really nice there. And I know it honestly appreciated about $30,000 since we moved them in. So I would say those areas are super hot. I would also say that if you are looking for the $300,000, a lot of times people go directly to condos and they start thinking, okay, 300,000, maybe I can get a condo in Sacramento, but you get stuck with HOAs and all that kind of fun stuff. So I would say if you are looking 300 and a three and two, something you want to look at, those are the areas I'd look at, or I would look at duplexes. Duplexes could be a great solution. You don't have to deal with HOAs normally in duplexes and they're good to go. Um, Justin, also feel free to reach out. I'd love to talk to you a little bit about what you're thinking and give you my thoughts. I mean, we've done 300. It wasn't easy. Um, and, but we, we did it and it, 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 you know, we did it with a VA. So it, it was a little tough, but we, we made it happen. Okay, guys, any other questions about the market in general? Like I said, our team right now, we've got a ton of people working with new homes. We know pretty much everyone at the new home companies. We know Danielle Koski over there at Lennar. We got Shig over at Folsom Farms. We got Shannon O'Connor over at Beezer. We got Ed over there at Taylor Morrison. We got everyone. So, okay, do you see El Dorado Hills coming down a bit in price? Whew. El Dorado Hills is one of those areas that people absolutely, absolutely love. Now, here's the thing that's pushing up the price point in El Dorado Hills. If you look at Da Vinci, that's where all the custom homes are being built. So not only is the price not cooling down, but these custom homes, and, and if you look on the map, go, go to Da Vinci, or even just take a drive in El Dorado Hills by Da Vinci. You're going to see my buddy, Derek Tober. He He's one of the best custom home builders in all of Sacramento. I mean, this guy has a program for anyone who's looking for a custom home from you pick out your piece of land and he hands you the keys. He's awesome. So if you guys want custom homes, let me know as well. Okay. But okay. El Dorado Hills. I don't see it going down in price that much. Um, I think that the best we had was maybe towards the end of last year um, because a lot of people were hurting, even people who could afford it, they needed their um, profit and loss for this year. So I do think El Dorado Hills is kind of seeing a little bit of an upswing, but, but, but here's the thing. I know El Dorado Hills is one of those areas that's amazing, but I will tell you this, and this is one of the things I tell people about El Dorado Hills. I love it. It's great. A little far out of the way for me, gorgeous houses, gorgeous living, don't get me wrong. But here's the thing with El Dorado Hills is um, if you're in Serrano or if you're in any of the it areas there, you're going to have to deal with Melrose and you're going to have to deal with HOAs. I would say if you're looking in El Dorado Hills, go take a look in Folsom at American River Canyon North. I like American River Canyon North a little bit better because of the Melrose and HOA is over there as opposed to El Dorado Hills. And I think it's closer to everything. It's a great place. And if you haven't driven through um, American River Canyon North, you are missing out. It is gorgeous. But getting back to the question at hand, I don't see, I don't see El Dorado Hills going down in price. It is just one of those areas people move into. And when people move in there, they're already thinking a million dollars. So El Dorado Hills, like I don't see it. Um, so, so yeah, I, I just don't see it. it. It's one of those places like Elk Grove, where even if we got a little bit more of inventory out there, it's going to be hard. I, I, El Dorado Hills is one of the it areas. Honestly, I see prices just increasing. Okay. What are the thoughts on Gold River? High HOA, but schools and safe. Yeah. Here's the thing. I live in Gold River. Okay. Shh. I live in Gold River and I love Gold River. You know, um, I think it's a great area. I think the HOAs are what kills Gold River a little bit. I think, um, I think there are other areas near Gold River that you could also take a look at. Crow Downs. If you go right up Hazel, you're going to see Crow Downs. It is one of my favorite places to live. I think it's like $28 HOA. Um, it's right near Sailor Bar. It's, it's Crow Downs is woof, one of my favorite spots to buy in. But I think Gold River is safe. I think it's like, I call it Gold River my Stepford community in Sacramento. Um, honestly, it's always green. It's always beautiful. It's completely safe, 100% safe. Um, I've lived there for the last seven years, and honestly, it's it's as safe as it can be. Everyone there is the only. Okay, here's the thing about Gold River that I that I'm not a big fan of. Um, I do think in Gold River, it's not, and, and this is prior to COVID. I don't think it's as social and as as kind of like. I don't think it's as social as other areas. I actually moved a couple from Coro Downs to Gold River and they kind of expected Gold River to be a little bit more friendly and they feel a little alone, like no one's really being social or anything. So I think Gold River, um, it's nice, it's upscale. I think it's a little hidden community, hidden gem that people don't see, but I don't, I think it's, it's a little bit of private and I think, you know, um, but I do love Gold River. I think it's nice. I think if you're looking for safe security upscale, 
but don't mind the HOAs. I think Gold River definitely is a spot for you. All right. My wife and I are looking for a house bigger than average lot. We don't we don't mind mill no house getting way small to me HOA prescription. No, it's bigger than average lot. We don't mind older homes, newer home lot. Okay, Curro Downs. Honestly, go to Curro Downs. I'll tell you this. You drive up Hazel, Hazel, like you're going from Gold River up Hazel, boom. And it's on the left-hand side. It's called Curro Downs. Go in there. You're going to see big lots, nice houses. Um, it's hard to find stuff in there, but I would say like it's right by the bluffs. So Curro Downs is definitely a nice area. Now, if you're looking for Fair Oaks specifically, I'd say also by Kenneth, um, Kenneth, is a great street to find some houses with land. Um, you know, I would say even maybe look towards Orangevale as well. Um, but Fair Oaks, I'd say is good. Um, I'd say we don't mind older homes, newer homes, a lot. Of, yeah. Yeah. The thing with the newer homes right now, that's absolutely nuts is the fact that like the, the lots are like this, they're really tiny. The only builder that I know that builds on uh, larger lots are K Havnanian. They build on custom lots and they have really, really big houses, but I would say Fair Oaks look for Curro Downs. You will not, honestly, it is awesome. It's a kind of a cool community up there. It was, it was named after like a horse track and all the horses, all the, all the street names are horse names. It's really, really nice. Oh, another thing that I love about Crow Downs is the fact that all the houses are set back. You know what I mean? Like one of the things that bugs me a lot is when a house is like right by the street or, you know, somewhat close to the street, all the houses that I've seen in Fair Oaks and the Crow Downs area are set back, but they also have a lot of big backyard back there. So um, I'd say that area you definitely have got to check out. You all absolutely love it. Also hit me offline. I got at least five or six other places you can check out. Okay. What advice do you have for buyers that are pre-approved and on a waiting list? Prices keep going up and we still haven't received a call back. <clears throat> Here's the thing. I think it's getting better now. Honestly, like I was selling, I was on a podcast a couple of days ago with Matt, the mortgage guy. And I basically said, look, here's the thing. I got a calls or emails from people directly who said they had availables as of last week. It was the first time it ever happened for me. So I think as interest rates rise, you're going to see more people, you know, say, Hey, look, we're going to put a little bit of hold on getting our new homes. The waiting list is, is, is large. I mean, it all depends also for what community you're looking at and whatnot. But I will say two things for this. Number one is there will be new other new communities. So hang tight and always try to be a person who's actually looking for a new community when they just start. When they just start up, if you can get on a waiting list, it's fantastic. Um, I would also say hedge your bets. Look around. I mean, let's say you're looking for Elk Grove specifically. I mean, and you want the 757, look near, near Elk Grove and the other zip codes. Like for example, a lot of people were so, you know, so stuck on uh, Madeira in Elk Grove. They loved Elk Grove. It was fantastic. But they didn't realize that Milestone, which was maybe like a five-minute drive, sure it wasn't in 757. I mean, you could have got a house like that day. And these houses were gorgeous. And it was a single-story community. And it was Taylor Morrison. So you have to expand your search a little bit and find out who's building. That's kind of one of the things we do with our clients as well. Um, like like our buddy Gilbert, who we just told him about some new communities as well. Um, I would say, you know, if you're having a problem and you're on a waiting list, uh, reach out to my team and just let us know what builder, what style of house you like and everything. We'll keep an eye out for you and just kind of let you know exactly when people are building. Like I said, honestly, one of the things that has been saving us through this whole thing is that we have all these salespeople all with their cell phones. So we know exactly who's building, when they're building and all that kind of fun stuff. That's how we knew about Beezer. You know, our buddy Shannon and Jody told us Beezer was building. So we've already connected with them. So like I said, we're very tight with a lot of the sales reps in uh, with all the builders. So as far as like, if you're thinking about something or if you're on a wait list, I would say just reach out to us. I mean, hey, look, you could be registered and we're, we're doing it to just, you know, we'll, we'll let you know if there's any other communities that kind of match what you're looking for. But you got to hedge your bets. I mean, a lot of people, maybe you maybe you were looking for like a next gen suite. Look for houses that could possibly have a next gen suite. After you buy it, we can get a contractor in there to switch them around for you. But at this point, I would say you've got two options. One is be patient. Like I said to my buddy Chris, who just locked in a deal last weekend, 12 bridges, Toyota Taylor Morrison. I swear, two weeks prior to that, he was thinking, he's like, I don't know what I want to do. I might be going to some other areas, yada, yada, and all that stuff. And I was like, Chris, my, my man, just hang in there, hang in there. Two weeks later, he got the exact model he wanted at 12 Bridges. He locked it in and he's good to go. So guys, there is a shift happening now. I do think new homes are going to be a little... New homes did two things that I think, in my opinion, they kind of screwed up. One is they did a huge price increase a couple of weeks ago. Pretty much all of them around the board. Everyone did this huge price increase of like 10, 15 grand. 
And since then, I think it's been a little slower for them. That on top of the interest rates rising, I think we're going to see a little bit of a shift. I think it will be easier for you to get in new homes. I will bet that people start getting calls sooner than later for new homes. So just hang in there. I promise you, like, it's not a complete black hole. It's because I, you know, I've got clients too who are waiting for that stuff. I would say that, um, and I hate to say this. I mean, um, hopefully, hopefully, no, 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 my buddies from Lennar are there. But uh, you know, it's just Lennar tends to be that company. And I'm guessing you're talking about Lennar because they just do not update you at all. And it's a little bit brutal. I mean, um, I do think, and I, it's not the sales reps' fault. I mean, it's kind of the builders, to be totally honest with you. I mean, um, they're a little bit taking advantage of the market. You know, we have this bid, yeah, the bidding system that's being thrown in place too, which I don't really think. I think uh, I think that that's just. I mean, I think people are penny pinching. Then the whole solar thing. Uh, there's just a bunch of weird stuff happening with new homes. So, I do think though, right now they made two tactical errors. One, the huge, huge price increase they just did, and two is that simultaneously the interest rates went up and they didn't take that into account. So I think I think we're going to see some openings at new homes. So hang in there. What do you think about future of Blackstone home resale values? We paid 60k over asking last month. Um, I would say, okay, so how long are you planning? Okay. What do you think about the future of Blackstone home for resale value? Okay. So how, how, how short term are we talking about? I mean, if it's short term, I'd probably say that, um, you know, it, it's going to be, it's going to be tough. I mean, I think a lot of people who are jumping into homes now, if what I think is going to happen with COVID and people are going to start going back to work and not really thinking about relocating, um, we could see home prices go down. Um, I don't think though, I mean, honestly, I think you should be okay, but you might see a little bounce down and then bounce back up. So I would say just hang in there. Um, I would say also, um, I would also say always be, you know, look around your realtor who probably got you the house probably can send you a CMA of the area probably monthly to let you know exactly how the, what homes have been moving in and everything in that area, like what the square footage is and all that stuff people are buying at. So I would say also follow your area, follow your neighborhood, follow your community, because I think that's going to give you a little bit of a guide of what is going to, um, what you're going to be able to sell your house for. And I do think if it starts to get worse and home prices start to go down, then I think maybe getting out of the home as soon as possible might make sense. If you're going to be selling it eventually, you might not be back for the bounce up. So I would just say stick tight, have your realtor send you a CMA weekly, take a look at it, see what things are trading and moving in there, and just kind of very much keep aware of your neighborhood and community. That'd be my two cents. All right. Da-da-da. All right. Yeah. So seriously. Not even joking. My buddy Chris just got into Taylor Morrison. Ed called me up. He had, what was it? He had a Breeze and a Mustang available, three lots, and we locked in. And my buddy Chris for a Breeze. So he was super excited. Okay. Do you think we can recover a price we paid in the next five years? Um, it all depends. I mean, I, I know. It's like, all depends. Great. Thanks for that. Um, okay. Here's the thing is, I think this year is going to be very telling. I think we have to figure out what interest rates are going to happen. What, what What's going to happen with interest rates straight up? I mean, I have no idea, but interest rates are going to dictate the market. If the interest rates and also the supply of houses on the market as well. So there's going to be a lot of factors to play in. I do think that if interest rates go up and all of a sudden there, there's a little bit more inventory on the market, home prices will go down and settle down a little bit more. But I do think here's the thing that everyone needs to take into account. Right now, we're Sacramento, this whole area was picked as the number one real estate market in all the United States. So if you did buy a house and you bought in the Sacramento area, you hedged your bet as much as humanly possible. So I think that if you bought in other areas of the United States, you could be, you know, it's not going to be good for you. But I do think in Sacramento, I think right now Sacramento is a huge in-demand area. And I think that if you were going to buy something, this is where you should have bought it. So I think that if there's anywhere that you're going to recoup, this is where you're going to do it. Okay. What areas of SAC are you bullish on this year? Oh my God, Sacramento. Man, I mean, there are so many areas of Sacramento. Um, 
Oh yeah, by the way, that's Matt the Mori's guy right there. You know, so uh, hit his channel. He's awesome. I don't know. I think all of Sacramento. I mean, there's nothing. It, it all depends. I mean, you got Citrus Heights. You got uh, that's just like the price point is still low enough where you can buy in there and then make a great deal of money. You got El Dorado Hills too, which is growing like crazy. The um, the amount you can get per square footage there is is ramping up to to Granite Bay. You got Rockland, which is great schools. I mean, honestly, like Sacramento right now, it's like it's like this. Anywhere you buy in this market. <laughs> gives your favorite. Okay, I'm gonna throw out my favorite. I'm thinking that right now, if if I could buy anywhere, I would say, and, and where you're thinking of the making the most bang for your buck, this is gonna be an interesting one because it's gonna be totally left field. I like. Let me think. Southland Park. I like Southland Park. I still like Southland Park. I think. Okay. I like South Land Park and I like Natomas. Even though I talk a lot of smack about Natomas as far as the schools and everything, I do think that once everything gets said and done, the downtown Sacramento downtown is going to be there, there's going to be a lot of pressure on downtown Sacramento to deliver. Developers I've talked to as well, they're going to be developing like crazy here and downtown is going to be it's going to be really, really unbelievable. I mean, we already had a decent downtown, but what I'm telling you in the future, I do think downtown is going to be just out of control. I think it's going to be super competitive with some of these other cities in the United States. And I do think that Southland Park is going to be a hot area to, to buy in. I think also like uh, Tahoe Park, I think that's another great area. I think anything close to downtown, it's going to be, it's, what's that whole old saying? Like, um, if you're near something, it, okay, what, basically by osmosis, you're going to do well. So I think Natomas for me, for investments, for people coming in, if Sacramento develops downtown the way I think it is, I think Natomas, I think Southland Park, I think Oak Park, I think Tahoe Park, I think those areas are going to go like crazy. So I love that area and I love, I can't wait to when COVID's done, we have our vaccines, everything goes back to normal. I can't wait to see the development that's happening downtown and how that's going to affect the growth of the city. Rockland's getting way too crowded. Oh my God. Yeah. Rockland is out of control crowded. Rockland. You think Rockland's crowded? Roseville's crowded too. Try going to that Costco. Um, by the way, for those people who are not turning in, Costco is a way of life in Sacramento. I at least go to Costco twice a week. So yeah, Costco is. Yeah. Natomas is in a flood zone, so you need flood insurance. There are certain areas of it. And also another thing too, to keep in mind as well, for those buying in West Sacramento, FEMA just did a huge, huge uh, evaluation of West Sacramento. So you might be in for some flood insurance if you buy in West Sacramento. Shh, but you hear, heard it here first. Um, Natomas though, flood zone, I get it. But here's the thing for me. I, I think the price point in Natomas, even though you top on some flood insurance in West Sacramento too, I think that if downtown does develop. So here's the thing about Sacramento. Downtown has never been one of those spots that people are like, wow, I can't wait to go downtown, this and that. Downtown has never been that spot. A lot of people who move into Sacramento kind of want to be near downtown because the vibe of other cities like Sacramento or San Francisco, Denver, Los Angeles, you know, you want to be near downtown. Um, Sacramento has never been that way. Folsom has a nice developed area where everyone goes to the Palladio. And then you got like Roseville, Galleria, I mean, all, all mall centric. But for the most part, like downtown in Sacramento has never been so impressive that people actually make the trip to downtown that often. So I do think that downtown, if it develops to an area where you're going to see a lot of, you know, nice restaurants, nice museums, not like we don't have them already, but if it develops even further, nice art scene, nice food scene, you know, some nice hotels, some night, nice little nightlife going on there. I do think that if you buy in Natomas, you're going to see um, your property price go up. So I do like Natomas for investment. If I had, like, let's say I was thinking of investment properties, I probably would go to Blue Mountain. I'd probably go to Beezer. Um, I'd probably go around Natomas to buy a couple rental units because I do think as an investment, Natomas is fantastic. I think West Sacramento, even though I was talking about FEMA, I do think though that West Sacramento is going to do pretty well too in 2022. So I like West Sacramento as well. In three to four years, do you see Elk Grove mostly being new development? I mean, it could. I mean, God, I mean, they're building like crazy over Elk Grove. But Elk Grove is kind of funny um, because a lot of the building is happening in the 757. So you're going to see the 757 develop and maybe then the 758. So it's going to be interesting. But Elk Grove is the amount of houses and the amount of development being there. It's going to be just crazy to see what Elk Grove is going to be about. I mean, we have so much really cool stuff happening in Elk Grove. Um, 
But for those who don't know Elk Grove, just understand that at nine o'clock, everything turns off. This is going to be interesting because Elk Grove is somewhat close to downtown. Um, so I do think in three to four years, Elk Grove is going to be one of those spots that you're going to see a lot of development. You're going to see probably other employers moving to Elk Grove as well, which I cannot wait for. Um, so I don't know. Elk Grove is going to be nuts. You know, like, you know, the only thing I will tell people about moving to Elk Grove, understand that during rush hour times, if you're going to get through Elk Grove, you're talking about 45 minutes. Elk Grove is a beast. It is three zip codes. It is just a bear to get through. So Elk Grove though, I will tell you straight up for all those people looking to buy an Elk Grove, I feel so bad for you because Elk Grove is one of those places where when you submit an offer, the listing agent will tell you over the phone, you're not sending an appraisal contingency, are you? So Elk Grove is a tough market. In fact, I will tell you straight up, I will debate anyone. I'll take that Pepsi challenge with anyone. Elk Grove is definitely the hardest and the toughest market to jump into still. And for all those people who are looking on Zillow or looking at realtor.com and seeing all these Elk Grove's house, that's three ninety nine. dollars those are the Elk Grove specials. The realtor basically lists them at three nine nine and then puts them in contract for four sixty four seventy. So don't be fooled. Don't be thinking that Elk Grove is a good deal. The chance of you getting a house for three nine nine Elk Grove, uh, I don't know. Maybe Joe Montana will come out of retirement. Better chance of that. So okay, Whitney Ranch in Rockland or Empire Ranch in Folsom. Which do you recommend? You know, here's the thing. I love Whitney Ranch, but I do think it's gotten a little too pricey. Just my opinion. I do like Empire Ranch and Folsom. Both are, you know, both are here and there. I think Empire, the HOAs are a lot more. That's one thing. Um, but they're both nice areas. Now, here's the thing about Folsom that I do like. I do feel in Folsom that you're kind of closer to everything too. Um, you know, I was showing um, a client of ours land and he chose Folsom over El Dorado Hills just because Folsom felt like it was kind of in the middle of everything. So I do think that even though El Dorado Hills is one of those spots where everyone's loving, moving into and all this kind of stuff, I do think Folsom has a little bit of an edge as far as not feeling so isolated. So um, I will have to go for Empire Ranch in Folsom. It's tough though. And still, here's the thing. I will tell you, Empire Ranch is great, but I'm going to have to say American River Canyon North above Empire Ranch just because of the HOA and the Melrose factor. So um, that's my two cents on that one. But I do think both areas are great. I mean, it's like, you know, it's just, it's picking two amazing spots to live. Um, I would also talk, I would also think lifestyle as well, what your lifestyle is. Um, I will say that um, El Dorado Hills is a little bit more of a golf course community. Um, like I said, a little bit more isolated. And so that's what I see there. So both great communities. Trust me, straight up, amazing communities. And I don't think you'll really do bad in either place. Although getting into both spots is very, very tough. As we discussed before, El Dorado Hills is super, super competitive. Um, and the listing agents are just not really that, uh, that they don't answer their phones that much, but um, that's it. Okay, before I head out and end this live, and I will be back next Wednesday at 5.30. I'm gonna manage these technical difficulties. So I'll be back here to answer all your questions. Does anyone have any additional questions before I go? Because I'd love to answer them for you guys. And like I said, I will be coming every Wednesday, 5.30. I'll be telling you about the stuff that's going on with my team as well, what we've been getting contract, how we've been doing on the listing side, on the buy side, on the new home sales side. I'll also bring my buddy Derek one day to sit here with me and explain new construction, how it works, how much you can build a custom home for, how much per square foot and all that kind of fun stuff. Okay, guys, going once, going twice. Okay, and this is the end of the video where I pander and I say, please hit that subscribe button and that like button. And oh, here we go. Is Ruben, Ruben again? Uh, You know, here's the thing. I've... I always uh, removing, and I'm sure you're talking about the uh, the um, the um, the appraisal contingency. I, uh, you know, I it's tough. Okay, like I don't like doing it. I always like to put a little buffer where I tell my clients, I'm like, look, here's the thing. Like, if it goes above appraisal, what are we thinking? And this is my guess on what it's going to go for. And so I like to put a buffer of maybe ten thousand dollars or fifteen thousand. But at the same time, in this market. We're seeing more and more offers that don't have appraisal contingencies. I mean, people are even taking off loan and taking off like inspection contingencies because it's so tough. Um, so I'd really, I'd really say if you get into that situation, know your realtor knows what they're talking about and is doing a little CMA. 
because you don't want to be put in a spot where your realtor is telling you, oh, you know what? Let's just remove the appraisal contingency. You get in a contract and all of a sudden, instead of like a $20,000 difference, the appraisal comes in and it's like a $50,000 difference. So just understand that like you really kind of got to know who you're working with and know that they're really an expert in the market. They know what stuff is trading for per square foot because you get yourself in a whole lot of trouble if you weigh that appraisal contingency and you have a realtor on your team that does not know what they're doing. So that's my two cents on appraisal contingencies. But yes, it is very common in this market. Um, okay, guys, like I said, this is the time where I tell you to please hit the subscribe button hit the like button, comment below for any questions. If you, if you miss this live broadcast question below, and I will answer every single one of those questions in my next live, um, next week, Wednesday at five 30. And like I said, if you guys are thinking about moving the area, reach out to my team. We'd love to talk to you, uh, work with you, get you your perfect home until next time. Bye.